Codex Anonymous, Basic Text, Chapter one, Chapter 1. Who's an Addict? Most of us do not have to think twice about this question. We know. Our whole life and thinking was centered in drugs in one form or another. The getting and using and finding ways and means to get more. We live to use and use to live. Very simply, an addict is a man or woman whose life is controlled by drugs. We are people in the grip of a continuing and progressive illness whose ends are always the same. Jails, institutions, and death. Those of us who have found the program of Narcotics Anonymous do not have to think twice about this question. Who is an addict? We know. The following is our experience. As addicts, we are people whose use of any mind-altering, mood-changing substance causes a problem in any area of life. Addiction is a disease that involves much more than the use of drugs. Some of us believe that our disease was present long before the first time we used. Most of us did not consider ourselves addicted before coming to the Narcotics Anonymous program. The information available to us came from misinformed people. As long as we could stop using for a while, we thought we were alright. We looked at the stopping, not the using. As our addiction progressed, we thought of stopping less and less. Only in desperation did we ask ourselves, could it be the drugs? We did not choose to become addicts. We suffer from a disease that expresses itself in ways that are antisocial and that makes detection, diagnosis, and treatment difficult. Our disease isolated us from people except when we were getting, using, and finding ways and means, means to get more. Hostile, resentful, self-centered, and self-seeking, we cut ourselves off from the outside world. Anything not completely familiar became alien and dangerous. Our world shrank and isolation became our life. We used in order to survive. It was the only way of life that we knew. Some of us used, misused, and abused drugs and still did not consider ourselves addicts. Through all of this, we kept telling ourselves, I can handle it. Our misconceptions about the nature of addiction included visions of violence, street crime, dirty needles, and jail. When our addiction was treated as a crime or moral deficiency, we became rebellious and were driven deep in, deeper into isolation. Some of the highs felt great, but eventually the things that we had to do to continue using reflected desperation. We were caught in the grip of our disease. We were forced to survive any way that we could. We manipulated people and tried to control everything around us. We lied, stole, cheated, and sold ourselves. We had to have drugs regardless of the cost. Failure and fear became, began to invade our lives. One aspect of our addiction was our inability to deal with life on life's terms. We tried drugs and combinations of drugs to cope with a seemingly hostile world. We dreamed of finding a magic formula that would solve our ultimate program, ourselves. The fact was that we could not use any mind-altering or mood-changing substance, including marijuana or an alcohol, successfully. Drugs ceased to make us feel good. At times, we were defensive about our addiction and justified our right to use, especially when we had legal prescriptions. We were proud of the sometimes illegal and often bizarre behavior that typified our using. We forgot about the times when we sat alone and were consumed by fear and self-pity. We fell into a pattern of selective thinking. We only remembered the good drug experiences. We justified and rationalized the things that we did to keep from being sick or going crazy. We ignored the times when life seemed to be a nightmare. We avoided the reality of our addiction. Higher mental and emotional functions, such as conscious and the ability to love, were sharply affected by our use of drugs. Living skills were reduced to the animal level. 
our spirit was broken, the capacity to feel human was lost. This seems extreme, but many of us been, have been in this state of mind. We were constantly searching for the answer, that person, place, or thing that would make everything all right. We lacked the ability to cope with daily living. As our addiction progressed, many of us found ourselves in and out of institutions. These experiences indicated that there was something wrong with our lives, that we wanted an easy way out. Some of us thought of suicide. Our attempts were usually feeble and only helped to contribute to our feeling of worthlessness. We were trapped in the illusion of what if, and if only, and just one more time. When we did seek help, we were only looking for the absence of pain. We had regained good physical health many times, only to lose it by using again. Our track record shows that it is impossible for us to use successfully, no matter how well we may appear to be in control. Using drugs always brings us to our knees. Like other incurable diseases, addiction can be arrested. We agree that there is nothing shameful about being an addict, provided we accept our dilemma honestly and take positive action. We are willing to admit without reservation that we have, we are allergic to drugs. Common sense tells us that it would be insane to go back to the source of our allergy. Our experience indicates that medicine cannot cure our illness. Although physical and mental tolerance play a role, many drugs require no expended, extended period of time to of use to trigger allergic reactions our reaction to drugs is what makes us addicts not how much we use many of us did not think that we had a problem with drugs until the drugs ran out even when others told us that we had a problem we were convinced that we were right and the world was wrong we used this belief to justify our self-destructive behavior we developed a point of view that enabled us to pursue our addiction without concern for our own well-being or the well-being of others. We began to feel that the drugs were killing us long before we could ever admit it to anyone else. We, had, we noticed that if we tried to stop using, we couldn't. We suspected that we had lost control over the drugs and had no power to stop. Certain things followed as we continued to use. We became accustomed to a state of mind that is common to addicts. We forgot what it was like before we started using. We forgot about social graces. We acquired strange habits and mannerisms. We forgot how to work. We forgot how to play. We forgot how to express ourselves and how to show concern for others. We forgot how to feel. While using, we lived in another world. We experienced only periodic jolts of reality or self-awareness. It seems that we were at least two people instead of one. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. We ran around and tried to get our lives together before our next run. Sometimes we could do this very well, but later it was less important and more impossible. In the end, Dr. Jekyll died, and Mr. Hyde took over. Each of us has a few things that we never did. We cannot let these things become excuses to use again. Some of us feel lonely because of differences between us and other members. This feeling makes it difficult to give up old connections and old habits. We all have different tolerances for pain. Some addicts needed to go to greater extremes than others. Some of us found that we had enough when we realized that we were getting high too often and it was affecting our daily lives. At first, we were using in a manner that seemed to be social or at least controllable. We had little indication of the disaster that the future held for us. At some point, our using became uncontrollable and antisocial. This began when things were going well 
and we were in situations that allow, allowed us to use frequently. This was usually the end of the good times. We may have tried to moderate, substitute, or even stop using, but we went from a state of drugged success and well-being to complete spiritual, mental, and emotional bankruptcy. This rate of decline varies from addict to addict. Whether it occurs in years or days, it is all downhill. Those of us who do not die from the disease will go on to prison, mental institutions, or complete demoralization of the disease as the pro disease progresses. Drugs have given us the feeling that we can handle whatever situation might develop. We became aware, however, that drug usage was lar largely responsible for some of our most worst, some of our worst predicaments. Some of us may spend the rest of our lives in jail for a drug-related crime. We had to reach our bottom before we were willing to stop. We were finally motivated to seek help in a later stage of our addiction. Then it was easier to see the destruction, disaster, and delusion of our using. It was harder to deny our addiction when problems were staring us in the face. Some of us first saw the effects of addiction on the people closest to us. We were very dependent on them to carry us through life. We felt angry, disappointed, and hurt when they found other interests, friends, and loved ones. We regretted the past, dreaded the future, and we weren't too thrilled about the present. After years of searching, we were more unhappy and less satisfied than when it all began. Our addiction enslaved us. We were prisoners of our own mind and were contemned by our own guilt. We gave up the hope that we would ever stop using drugs. Our attempts to stay clean always failed, causing us pain and misery. As addicts, we have an incurable disease called addiction. The disease is chronic, progressive, and fatal. However, it is a treatable disease. We feel that each individual has to answer the question, am I an addict? How we got the disease of no, is of no importance to us. We are concerned with the recovery. We begin to treat our addiction not by, by not using. Many of us sought answers but failed to find any workable solution until we found each other. Once we identify ourselves as addicts, help becomes possible. We can see a little of ourselves in every addict and see a little of them in us. This insight lets us help one another. Our future seemed hopeless until we found clean addicts who were willing to share with us. The denial of our addiction kept us sick, but our honest admission of addiction enabled us to stop using. The people of Narcotics Anonymous told us that they were recovering addicts who had learned to live without drugs. If they could do it, so could we. The only alternatives for recovery are jails, institutions, dereliction, and death. Unfortunately, our disease makes us deny our addiction. If you are an addict, you can find a new way of life through the NA program. We have become a very grateful in the course of our recovery. Through absence and thorough working the 12 steps of Narcotics Anonymous, our lives have become useful. We realize we are never cure cured and that we carry the disease within us for the rest of our lives. We have a disease, but we do recover. Each day we are given another chance. We are convinced that there is only one way for us to live, and that is the N.A. way. that no addict ever die of the horrors of addiction.